Hi guys, Alex from Bicycle Chain here. I'm gonna to talk to you today about keeping your nice shiny new or your old faithful steed nice and safe and protecting it from those pesky thieves. So we'll talk about best practice, how to lock your bike up, the tools available, uh, and the good deterrents on the market to, uh, to keep it safe. The thing for me is you can never ever be too careful. You have to be absolutely vigilant. You don't know who's watching. I don't wanna overplay this, but we've seen in 20 years of, of being in business, or 24 years of being in business, we've seen tons of, of stories that we really wish we hadn't, where people have left their bike for 30 seconds and somebody's just hopped on it and ridden off. So best practice definitely is, if you have to leave your bike anywhere unattended, whatever you do, lock it up in some way or another, or flat out never ever leave it anywhere really. If your bike's worth serious money, uh, our advice always is, if you can not ever have to leave it locked up outside of your own property, then it's a good bet. If you do, for goodness sake, invest in something decent enough that you'll protect it. Because the reality is there are thieves that with the time, they have the skills and the right tools, they'll get through more or less anything given enough time to do it. So on that note, we'd also really recommend you insure your bike in one way or another, because should the worst happen, then you'll be covered, you'll get an, a replacement bike or appropriate value. So that's a great idea. Before we talk about locks, there's two things you should think about in terms of identifying a bike should the worst happen. One is the frame number, which if you purchase your bike from ourselves, should be in your handbook. If not, you can find it on the underside of the bike, on the down tube or the bottom bracket. Uh, the other thing that's available is data tag. This is an ultraviolet or they drop a chip down into your seat tube that glues in. It's very, very difficult to get rid of this, and it's something that the police will have uh, scanners that, that should your bike be recovered, this will ping up your details, it's registered on a database, and the bike should get back to you. So, let's look at all the ways of avoiding this ever happening. Obviously, locks, about the only thing you can uh, take out on the bike with you and stop somebody just getting hold of your bike and disappearing. So I'm gonna show you our two most common types of lock. We have cable lock and D-lock. So the cable lock is, as you can see, small, portable, nice and convenient, and it's lightweight. D-lock is heavier, much bigger, and bulkier. So obviously, what's the difference? Well, one is much, much stronger than the other, but they both have a place and it might be right for you. So who is the cable lock right for? Well. If you are nipping into the shops for five or 10 minutes and you just wanna make sure that that opportunist thief who sees your bike unlocked doesn't hop on and ride off into the sunset, this is ideal for you. The drawback with it is, if the person's got the proper equipment and the time, so if you're leaving your bike locked up a side street where not many people are gonna be passing and seeing it, then you may well need the D-lock because you'll need serious equipment to get through one of these uh, and serious time as well. So. With D-locks, they come rated as sold secure, which if you are insuring your bike, you need to check the details because they may require a sold secure lock. Sold secure is an independent testing house that tests locks to the same standard and then grades them bronze, silver, or gold. Bronze now is, a, is an opportunist uh, deterrent and gold is what they cast as maximum security. So it's as good as you're gonna get basically with one of these. So let's have a look at actually locking your bike up and, and how you're best to do that. Let's take a look at the cable lock first. So one of the beauties with the cable lock is, is it's massive length. So most modern bicycles have quick release parts on them, particularly the wheels. You need to bear in mind if you're locking the bike up, it's best practice to get the cable through both wheels and the frame because obviously you don't wanna lock up the back of your bike or only one part of the bike someone comes along and does one of your wheels and steals the rest of it. Uh, I did actually once see somebody who'd locked their bike through their saddle rail here to a railing and a clever thief with an Allen key just came along and undid the seat and took the whole bike away. So please don't fall into that trap. So with the cable, run it through the back here. So any lock really, if you can get it in this rear triangle of the frame and the, the rear wheel, then you've got the, the rear wheel and the frame locked up uh, and that's, you know, that's ideal. So then run the cable around the front and then you can bring this all the way back. Now, one thing to bear in mind, whatever lock you're using, make sure you lock the bike to something immovable. 
because uh, we have seen things where people have just picked the bike up and walked off with it or they've someone's locked it to a pillar that's only three foot high and they've just hooked the lock over the top and, and disappeared so we don't want that to be you okay so the d-lock uh, this is the extra long loop d-lock these come in varying lengths you can also buy the d-lock with cable extension as well so if you are running front and rear quick release wheels it's a, maybe a consideration you can d-lock the back of the bike cable through the front and your whole bike is is secure so if we take a look using this one so right so well again aim to lock through the rear triangle of the frame this section here and then you get this over one of the uh, you know Sheffield bars or or you can lock it back through here and into uh, you know the rear wheel hoops whatever whatever you're locking it to something immovable though obviously then you'd put this around the edge lock it up and off you go so that makes your rear wheel and the back of the frame extra extra secure and then again when you come back take it out and put it back so d locks can be stored on the bike it's just you'd have to come install with your bike and check it out shapes of the frames will vary and the brackets can or may or may not fit basically if you don't think you require the quick release aspect of the wheels or your seat post you can buy uh, allen key or specific security skewers which have a, an, a really unusual uh, size that you can only buy through the security company so you just swap your quick release skewer out with one of those makes your wheels more or less impossible to steal. So to recap, never leave your bike unattended and unlocked, not even for five seconds. If you do have to lock it up, choose a nice visible high traffic area uh, and lock it to something immovable that they can't just lift your bike over or, or clear off with your bike with a lock attached. If you've got quick release wheels, don't forget to lock the wheels to the bike or put your lock through both wheels if at all possible. Uh, and if you've got a bike over probably 1500 pounds maybe even less uh, lock it up as little as possible keep it in the bedroom uh, if your wife will allow you it's the safest place there is right uh, in terms of cost of a lock and what you're best to spend it's about a good good practice is about 10 percent of the value of your bike so that gives you something to go on uh, the d-lock featured in this film is 60 pounds it's gold rated as high as you can go so that gives you a feel for for the spectrum really cable locks start as little as as around 20. thanks for watching see you soon okay yeah okay cool is that all right